Hello, and welcome back to the fifth NNQ Symposium. Uh, George, you can go ahead and unmute yourself whenever you're ready. <clears throat> I just have a couple general housekeeping things, and then we will get on with the presentation. Um, so we will be doing a Q&A at the end, as we do with every presentation. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, for audience members, there is a button at the bottom of your Zoom window that says Q&A. Uh, you'll click on that. It'll give you a space to type, and that's how you'll send in questions. You're welcome to send them in at any point, but we will be waiting until the end of the presentation to answer them. Um, and all of them will be shared anonymously, whether your name is attached to it or not. Um, so don't worry about that. Um, and finally, we always like to thank the Eric P. Newman Numismatic Education Society, who fully fund the entire symposium and enable us to make it free for everyone who participates. So very grateful for them. And for this presentation, we are also very grateful to George Kuhe, who will be presenting on medals of the Catholic hierarchy in the United States. Um, George is one of the recipients of the Newman Grants. Uh, so this is the project that he's been working on for that grant. So this is serving as somewhat of an update on his research. Um, so that's all I have. George, I will let you take it away. And I'll be back at the end for the Q&A. Thank you very much for everyone joining in today. Uh, just a little background information. Uh, Baltimore was created as the first diocese in the United States in 1789. Uh, with further population growth, the diocese of Boston, New York, Philadelphia, and Bardstown, Kentucky were created in 1808, and Baltimore was elevated to the status of an archdiocese. Not to get bogged down with terminology used in this talk, let me just explain a few simple things. Uh, the local administrative area in the Catholic Church is a parish. Several parishes in a geographical area form a diocese, and the administrator of a diocese is a bishop. The bishop's church is the cathedral of the diocese. Often, the largest city in a region of diocese is an archdiocese and it is under the administration of an archbishop. This slide shows St. Patrick's Cathedral of the Archdiocese of New York and the old Cathedral of the Assumption of the Blessed Virgin Mary in Baltimore Diocese with an additional 32 archdioceses and is one archdiocese for members of the United States military, which was created in 1985. Prior to 1985, the US military service members were under the uh, guidance of the Archbishop of New York. In the church, cardinals are an honorary title. They could be archbishops, scholars, or abbots of religious orders but it is from the group of cardinals that a new pope is elected. Currently, there are 226 cardinals, of which 128 are under the age of 80 and are considered elector cardinals. As a young collector leading into the bicentennial, my first area of interest was the copper coinage of George III. As I stayed in the scouting program, I participated in the Scout Service Corps in Philadelphia for the 1976 International Eucharistic Congress, which was a pretty big deal. And over time, started to collect non-papal medals and non-devotional medals. And as you can see, now have a 40-year record of publications on the topic. So what have I learned is that since 1860, there are about 435 medals issued for the hierarchy or depicting diocesan cathedrals. I am not gonna show them all to you today, so breathe a sigh of relief, but I wanna give you some teasers. This group of images will focus on famous artists. From Philadelphia, we have William H. Key, Anthony Paquette, and George Morgan. They depict at left St. Charles Boromo Seminary, which is the major seminary of Philadelphia uh, Archdiocese. And the other two medals depict the Cathedral of St. Peter and St. Paul. On the top row, 
we have a medal for uh, William O'Connell, Archbishop of uh, Boston by Bella Lyon Pratt. Uh, Oreo Mastrusi, a medalist known for his papal medals, uh, honoring Cardinal Spellman. And uh, the Centennial Medal for the uh, Diocese of Burlington, Vermont by uh, Robert Wyman. On the bottom row, we have examples by Laura Garden before she marries Mr. Frazier and a sculpt based on a drawing by Whitehead and Hogue was certainly well positioned with badges and pinbacks. And once they moved into making medals, Julio Kalani seems to have been their go-to bishop portrait sculptor. Here are six examples all by him. In the 1960s, the Franklin Mint got into the coin and metal game and Gilroy Roberts designed the Archbishop Hannon and Cardinal Spellman medals and an unknown artist, the death commemorative tells him. Very often, the, the, the person on the medal doesn't have time to sit for a sculptor to do a portrait. So photographs are provided and sometimes just a few photographs. These photos match fairly close for the medals honoring Cardinal Hayes. Um, and on the right, the Medal of Congress medal for Cardinal O'Connor. While doing research and reading contemporary news articles, one can find out some interesting or concerning facts. These silver examples of otherwise common bronze stripes offer this opportunity. 12 of the Cardinal Gibbons medals were struck on the two bishops attending the Eucharistic Congress in 1926, and a very limited number of Cardinal Hayes medals were struck by Tiffany. This slide depicts what I call uh, legend failures. The silver medal at left gives a very crowded Latin legend for 1961. The Gilt Seminary Dedication Medal of 1926 is in a very hard to read type font for a two inch medal. Finally, the 1979 medal was for the visit of Pope John Paul II to Des Moines, Iowa. A fact that unless you were there, is really hard to figure out from the engraved code. These designs for the 1926 International Eucharistic Congress are a study in design and strike problems. The original at left is 50 millimeters in high relief. Note on the reverse, a dike crack forming at four o'clock. Um, right above the mint name of Johnson, uh, for Stefano Johnson of Milan. I could just imagine that they didn't want to proceed for the large order of strikes. So they convinced a design change and a new design was struck. The legend reworked into the design and the size reduced to 40 millimeters. And this is the, med, the common medal that you uh, see today. Um, I've only noticed two of the uh, larger 50 millimeter strikes uh, in, in 40 years of looking for these things. And then you have other issues of designing. The white metal memorial medal has a misspelling of Cardinal McCloskey's last name on the reverse. Edward Cardinal Egan had been elevated to the Cardinalate in 2001, but here, seven years after that fact, his old coat of arms of an archbishop is used in the reverse design. 
And just as a quick review, an archbishop's coat of arms has four tassels at the bottom and a cardinal's coat of arms has five tassels on the bottom row. So even though the name is right, just a few millimeters away, uh, the centered design is wrong. Yes, there have been bad men in the church, but before they were uncovered, they also issued medals. Starting in the 1950s, the New York area Cardinal Spellman works with Digis and Kluss to make a small charm, which was sold in a cathedral gift shop, and that is at the left. And as a permutation, I feel they were made into cufflinks also. In the center, we see two cufflinks, uh, one uh, for Terence Cardinal Cook, showing his coat of arms as an auxiliary bishop. There's just three tassels at the bottom of the shield and uh, the coat of arms, his personal coat of arms is not paired with that of the Archdiocese of New York. Later on, when he becomes Archbishop in 19, at the death of Cardinal Spellman in 1967, he gets a pair of cufflinks with the four tassels on his coat of arms. And still later, the gift shop produces a five tassel version after he gets elevated as a Cardinal. I'm sure there was a pair of gold cufflinks made at that time for him, but I have never observed them. On the bottom, we have two, again, small uh, items, uh, charms, um, one for Bishop Kellenberg, one for Bishop McGinn, and uh, they both served uh, the Diocese of Rockville Center, which is on Eastern Long Island. Sometimes the early advertisements do not match what was really made. Here is an advertisement in a Baltimore paper advertising the sale of memorial medals and looking for distributors of those medals in 1921 after the death of Cardinal Gibbons. But at right, we have one of those medals, which I wouldn't say is common today, but I've observed them in this um, copper bronze strike, and I've also observed them gold plate. I've never observed any of the other uh, metal permutations that are mentioned in the ad. And I've never observed a facing portrait as depicted in the ad. <laughs> For many years, I've known about the 32 millimeter and 44 millimeter examples of the Archbishop Spellman Medal as military vicar. I've never seen a 110 millimeter version except for this listing and illustration from the Harmer Rook sale of his collection. The sale catalog, as many know, as many of you know, was printed, but the auction was canceled. I've been told that the collection remains mostly intact and is still owned by the archdiocese. But as yet, nobody's let me gone in to see the metal. Listen to your voice in your head. Listen to your mom. What are you going to do with all this stuff? I'm going to write a catalog. So this year I made an application to the Eric P. Newman Educational Society, presented my plan. First was to write the archives of all the dioceses in the United States. Uh, while that was happening, I also typed up descriptions of what will be the catalog copy based on the items in my collections and scans that I've been collecting over the last few years. Then it was getting upgraded photography and uh, digital photography uh, for specimens in my collection. And uh, now it's all coming together. So why am I interested in all this stuff? Well, this is my church connection. For five years, part 
time I was an usher at St. Patrick's Cathedral, and for 15 months full time, I got to be chief usher until, well, in the fall of 19, from what a church should be. Thank you very much. Questions? All right. <clears throat> Um, so, George, you can go ahead and stop your screen share. There's a little red button should be at the top of the screen. Um, and for everyone watching, uh, you are welcome to go ahead and send in questions to the Q&A. Um, it should be a button at the bottom of your screen. Just click on it and it will bring up a text box. Um, so to start out, um, can you tell us a little bit more about the Newman Grants? Oh. They're, they're wonderful. Uh, <laughs> uh, they uh, assist with uh, research, travel, uh, in my case, writing letters. They will research, they will assist in the production of the catalog. And it's going to be a digital catalog that'll be available uh, on the Newman portal. All righty. Um, do you have a favorite medal? Uh, oh, uh, no. <laughs> like a top three? <laughs> I would say I, I really like the Cardinal Farley medal uh, that Laura Garden did. It was only, uh, she was only using that name in a very short period of time. So it was a small window of opportunity. And and in the course of research, there are two sizes to that medal. It, uh, and that was really interesting to find out about. But although uh, it's photographed in contemporary newspapers, um, there's again, very little information in the archives of the Archdiocese of New York as to how many were ordered or what was done with them when they got them. All righty. Um, any idea when we'll be able to view your catalog on the Newman portal and where should we follow along for updates if we want to be notified when it's available? Well, um, I would say you should uh, subscribe to the uh, eSylum e-newsletter by Wayne Homren and uh, they often give updates as to what's happening new on the portal. Uh, my grant, oh my gosh, when, 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 what's my grant deadline? Oh, probably next September. I think I still have time. Uh, my letters are still flowing in. I've only, uh, let's see, I, I mailed out uh, between uh, September 28th and uh, November 10th, I mailed out 190 letters. Um, and so far I've gotten 23 replies. So they're still, uh, they're still dribbling in. <laughs> uh, okay, that's all we have in the Q&A for now. Um, so uh, 90, 90 uh, I will add that 90 dioceses issued medals that I know of so far. So uh, it's less than uh, 50%, but I think that with this correspondence thing I have going on with the diocese, uh, the archivists of the diocese, that there will be uh, an opportunity to find more. Sounds good. Um, are there any current publications on the topic? Um, just the three articles I wrote. <laughs> gotcha. Uh, and uh, so that would be, there's one on Cardinal Gibbons, one on uh, St. Patrick's Cathedral and the Archbishops of New York, and one on Cardinal Mundelein. Uh, and that's sort of why I got interested in doing uh, bishops and archbishops, because there really were no publications. A lot of people go right for the Pope. To me, the Pope was always out of reach. And uh, I, I, I kept it that way. And uh, just really uh, 
felt that the local things were uh, a lot more accessible. Yeah, it's always exciting to find an area of the hobby that hasn't been deeply researched already. Certainly. All right. Okay, there's nothing else in the Q&A. So I'm gonna go ahead and wrap us up. And if we have any other questions by the end of that, we'll go back to them. Um, so audience members, send those in promptly if you have them. Um, otherwise, thank you so much, George, for taking the time out to present. We always love to have Newman Grant winners on here um, to provide updates on their research. Um, Cause we know, you know, all of you all are doing some really interesting and important research for the hobby. So very happy to have you. And for everyone watching, thank you so much for attending. Um, our next presentations will be starting at 2.30. We have Douglas Mudd from the ANA who will be talking about um, some foreign currency. I believe it was German East Africa. Um, so tune into that one and we'll be running throughout the evening today and then all of tomorrow as well. So thank you everyone for tuning in and that will wrap us up. Um, George, did you have anything last minute that you'd like to add? Thank you very much for your attention. Enjoy lunch. <laughs> Sounds good. All righty.